undefeated Cincinnati Bearcats. Welcome, Coppin State. Good evening and welcome inside of BB&T Arena in Highland Heights, Kentucky. Tom Glitter alongside 1992 Final Four participant Terry Nelson as we get you set for the third straight home game for Mick Cronin and his Bearcats. And boy, Terry, the red and black have been explosive offensively so far this season. They've shared the ball well. And it helps when you have guys that can defend and then get out early on the break. As you watch them pass the ball around, they have been absolutely lights out from three-point range because of the ability to share the ball. And because of those three-point shooters, they just seem to gut the backside out. They get layup after layup because they have such magnificent vision. And guys that are deadly from the outside makes it easy to score. 209 points in the first two games here at bb t Arena for the University of Cincinnati. Mick Cronin this season will have two point guards orchestrating his offense, and they'll both be important all year long. It's a two-headed monster at the point guard. Justin Jennifer, he's a guy that's a pit bull. He's only 5'10", but he's got really long arms for a 5'10 frame. He's able to get in traffic, use his strong body that he has just recrafted in the off seasons, the past couple seasons. We look for him to make dynamic plays. Then Kane Broom, we've seen each of them start one game. Broom an important piece as well. Broom is slippery. He's a guy that can get in there. He can shoot the deep ball. He can step back and do that. He's also crafty in the paint. He has the ability to knock down shots and make everybody around him better because he draws a double team. Broom and Jennifer will look to get the Bearcats to 100 points again tonight. If they hit the century mark, it'll be the first time in program history that the Bearcats have scored 100 points in three straight games. Starters and the tip come your way when we return. It's the fourth ever matchup between the Bearcats and the Eagles. Back with you at BB&T Arena where Coppin State set to take on number 12 Cincinnati, a matchup that has seen the red and black win the previous three meetings. Let's take a look at the starting five for each club and for Mick Cronin. Back to the five that started game number one on Friday night with Kane Broom running the point. At the other end for Juan Dixon and Coppin State, you see Dewan Clayton, Karan Davis, Lamar Mo Morgan, and Coppin State, a team that's playing tonight their third game in seven days, as are the Bearcats, but they'll play again tomorrow, so a busy opening week for the Eagles. There is Juan Dixon, the first-year head coach, and the name's probably familiar to basketball fans. Why? Well, 2002 Final Four, most outstanding player with Maryland. Of course, the Terrapins were national champions in 02, and at the other end, the veteran head coach for the University of Cincinnati, Nick Cronin, now in his 12th season at his alma mater and certainly has had great success over now almost a decade since rebuilding the program when he took over in 2006. The Bearcats in their home whites playing here at their home away from home while Fifth Third Arena back on campus is renovated. BB&T Arena is home for the 17-18 season. Kyle Washington will come to meet court. He'll tip it up. The Bearcats win the tip. And the fourth ever meeting between these two teams is underway here in Highland Heights. Jacob Evans looking down low to the bull. Nice move, the drop step. The bull in the China shop. Washington spins in the lane and has his first two. Washington and Broom did not start on Monday in the win against Western Carolina. Came off the bench after starting the season opener last Friday. Here's the frustrating part when you trying to run your offense, but nobody's open and everything that you practice in practice is not working. Here's Karan Davis driving the line. Lane kicks it out to the right side. Clayton. Clayton will spot up just inside the three-point line right in front of the UC bench. No good. Quick rebound for UC, and they work left to right. Three-pointer. Cumberland, no problem. And the script that they've worked on in practice is working to perfection. Penetrating kick by Kane because he's so elusive to a wide open Cumberland. Two shots taken, two shots made for Cincinnati and a five point lead early for the Bearcats. Oh. Trey or driving the lane has a shot block. No lack of pace for Cincinnati. Evans into the lane is fouled as he takes the shot and he'll head to the line for the first free throws of the night. Mention this is the fourth ever meeting between the two teams. 
UC's won the previous three. And come on, my partner Terry Nelson played in the first ever meeting in the NCAA tournament 1993. Eight rebounds, big fella. Man, I had a triple single. Come on, look at that. 93 66. Huggins gave you some good minutes that Forget night. Forget huh? the, the points because that wasn't my thing. The eight rebounds, the two assists, and the five charges. I didn't, I didn't put that in there. Somehow that was not in the box score. Lamar Morgan I had picks a quadruple up the single. Come on, Tommy. That game played at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York, which is lovely in March. I don't know if you remember that. March of 93. All I don't know. It was so cold. I saw Santa Claus with extra clothes I, on. I, I attended Syracuse for four years, so I fully yes. believe that. That in mid-March. Santa Claus had under armor on. Not real tropical cold. in central New York. <laughs> Two free throws made by Jacob Evans. First free throws of the game for our oh. team. Driving the lane is Clayton. He is fouled once he gets into the lane. And Gary Clark will pick up his first. And Clayton just put broom on skates. Look at that. Oh, wait a minute. He goes in there and he gets the foul. And he goes, you're not going to put me on skates and then have me on a highlight where I'd just rather foul you and break that up right there. Gary Clark was called on the reach in. First free throw. Happy for birthday. Clayton is up and through. Yes, absolutely. 23rd birthday today for the senior out of Clayton, North Carolina. Does it me or does it seem like seniors are getting older and older? I think just you're getting older and older. Yeah, that's probably right. As we talk about your senior year in 1993. Yeah, we had uh, five guys on that team 23 years old, so that's what it takes to go as far in this tournament. Now Washington working left elbow. Nearly two minutes gone, first half. Washington to the window, up and in. Great patience right there by Kyle Washington. Tried to do the two-man game, didn't work. Let the cane uh, gut out of there, and he goes and puts his left hand scoop off the glass. Eagles still looking for their first field goal make of the game. Left side, it'll be Davis. Washington in his face, he has nowhere to go. Back to Davis. Stops, pops, and rattles off. Gary Clark will collect. Kane looking, he's surveying. You're going to get into a high post screen here. As he puts that shot and he gets fouled on the play. Broom will end up at the free throw line after Dewan Clayton gets a piece of him. His first team second. You know how Styles, Tommy, come back around? You know, like Gauchos are coming back in, the, the Knickerbockers, and tight shorts are coming back in. So, you know, this, this, I've noticed that a little bit, yeah. This, that's, that's a couple fad. Guys on I State. tried to get out of there, you know, when I was at Long Beach City College back in, you know, 1990, with the, the shorts were so small, we had to wear, we, we kept, they were called grays back then, which are Under Armour now, those little leggings. But now, players are rolling up their shorts and trying to make them small on purpose. Turning back the clock a little bit. <laughs> Free throws are good by Kane Broom, his first two. Broom, the junior, playing his first year for UC after sitting out last year, averaging 16 points per game through the first two. Three-pointer, no good. Rebound tipped out to Cumberland. The pace quickly in white, flying to Broom. We thought about a three and held on to it. Now to Clark, he had a look and didn't take it, and the Bearcats can settle into their offense. To the bull. Washington spinning to the bucket. Up and in, and Kyle Washington has six. That's four more than the Eagles have total. And Cincinnati rolling here early at BBT Arena. Chad Andrews Fulton looked over at the coach and sort of just shrugged his shoulders like, you know, what am I supposed to do? Well, first thing you're supposed to do is you're not let him flash across you in the middle of the paint right there because that's his shot on the scouting report. You already know he's going that way. And then you allow him to come down once again and post you right in his little sweet spot. He's only one dribble away from doing what he wants to do, and you don't take away his left, you don't take away his right. You sit right behind him. Any post player defensively who sits behind a dynamic offensive post player, you are toast. Now Washington has now started 37 of the last 39 games dating back to last year. Average 13 points per game, seven rebounds as a junior. Of course, a transfer from NC State comes in averaging 10 points per game. Here early on in the campaign for the 12th ranked Bearcats, and Kane Broom deflects it off the foot of Chad Andrews Fulton, who just came in, the junior forward out of Philadelphia. And a deflection gets the ball right back to the Bearcats, who lead by 11 early. Cats love these deflections, and I like the pace. I like how everybody seems to be slow, taking their time in what they do. That was the first turnover of the game for either oh. team. Gary Clark thought about it, stepped back, and drained the three on his birthday. First, first three points of the night. Yeah, we'll take that. 
the Clark man. I looked at him and I said, hey, he's, he wants to get that next triple-double. He wants to be the next big man to have a triple-double. The old, old head Eric Hicks is posting stuff on Instagram about how he's the last guy with a triple-double, and he's challenging Clark. Careful what you ask for, yes. Eric Hicks. Clayton's <laughs> jumper from the free throw line doesn't fall. Coppin State still without a field goal make here in the first three and a half minutes. And Other end, just... Jacob Evans with a quick trigger, drains it. Cincinnati six for six from the field to start the game. Well, you know, Eric Hicks was a beast when he played, and Jacob Evans is in beast mode right now with that pump fake one dribble pull up. He's so beautiful in poetry in motion when he attacks the basket like that. All five starters for Mick Cronin have scored in the first four minutes and are out to an 18 to two lead. Hey, I might get my average up from four in the tournament 93 in this game. Trey Thomas driving the lane is fouled. Gary Clark picks up his second. And Trayvon Scott will come on to replace Clark who's in foul trouble early. Trey Scott comes in and He's going to give you energy at all costs. He is a dynamic energy guy, but not just an energy guy. He's very intelligent, and he's worked on his game. Nick Cronin won't be happy about Gary Clark having two personal fouls in, first, in the first four minutes, but when he's winning 18-2, to two, and this year with the depth that he has, not as concerning as maybe the last three years. Well, I don't think he's much concerned because of that depth, but Clark is concerned because he wanted to have a big game for his birthday. Oh! Clayton shot blocked, but it's grabbed by Andrews Fulton who follows and picks up the Eagles first field goal make of the night and the cats come down and look in a beautiful play make by Kane Broom draws two defenders they go for the shot fake and he dumps it down to Kyle and Kyle is putting together a masterful game Washington leading all scores with eight points he is four for four from the field all Bearcats in the first four and a half minutes Why buy using him in the first four and a half minutes? Seven for seven from the field and 20 points to open up an early 16-point lead, Terry. This is a team that has focus on their mind. I mean, they are locked in offensively and defensively. The shots are falling. They are doing what they do best, which is share the basketball. But when you have a guy you can throw it down on the block to and Kyle Washington, who's off to a fast start, when you allow him to get comfortable and use either both left and right hand jump hooks without any resistance at the rim, look out for a big day because when the big fella likes to eat, he likes to eat well. 209 points in the first two games. If the Bearcats can reach the century mark tonight, it would be the first time in school history that the University of Cincinnati has scored 100 plus points in three consecutive games. And you don't think they know that? Uh, they're on pace for about 80 points in the first half. This, this is a very bright an intelligent basketball team and they read the clippings and they may but not with a little out. bit of talent too yeah they got some talent but they know they, they trying to chase history here on well, the way they play the full court pressure the quick pace up the court after a miss and there's 10 seconds the turnover forced gives it right back to the red hot bearcats well you get guys in the front of the press that can slide their feet so you always have two trappers two anticipators one protector that one protector in the back is is kyle washington and the other guys are just all over the place just trying to create havoc. Well, they created havoc there. And the ball back leading by 16. Evans at the top of the key. Looking for Washington. He's been the hot hand four for four. Nice pass. Outside for Cumberland. Three ball, got it. Trey Scott averaging nearly three assists per game. He's been a, a bright spot offensively with his passing. Cincinnati three for three from downtown. Clayton with pressure from Evans looking to set up the offensive attack that has struggled for Coppin State. Just one for seven shooting the basketball early. Trey Thomas working in front of the UC bench. Drives to the lane, floats oh. it up high off the window with his right hand and it falls through. That was beautiful. Talked about Trey Scott, not three assists. Checked at four and a half assists per game. He has really opened up his game offensively. Nice cut to the rim. Washington spinning it to Scott. Who puts it off the glass and in? I mean, that was a nice dive. You throw it to the block. You don't stand in the high post. That's not your game. You dive to the opposite basket to gut it out so that if he attempts to make a play towards the middle, you're in rebound position. Scott, the six different Bearcats to score early. Clayton, top of the key, feeds it to Cedric Council. And there's the first three ball of the night for the Eagles. 
And they hit that first one, and even right there, oh, look at that, look at the speed. Oh. Kane Broom is so fast, the pass was gone before he even finished his move. <laughs> Broom threw it in. I mean, watch this. He catches it right here. He quarter turns. He looks, finds Trey. Trey does a little pump fake, gathers himself, and goes up off the glass, turns around, and picks up full court. Kane Broom will get a chance to catch his breath as Justin Jennifer, who started on Monday, comes on for the first time. And Nasir Brooks. Checks in after making the start Monday as well. Three-pointer from the corner is no good. Trey Scott is fouled trying to grab the rebound. Adam Treor, the junior forward out of New York City, got a piece of him. Yeah, you, get, you can't get away with that when shorts are that tight. I mean, <laughs> mess around and take your blood pressure from your shorts. <laughs> I'm not sure the shorts had anything to do with the foul. He was pulling them down after the foul, Tommy. Okay. Come on. All right. Jacob Evans catches the pass on the right elbow, and coming on his back was Keandre Fair, the freshman guard out of Hartford, Connecticut. Fair picks up his first. Fourth team foul on the Eagles. Looking at Coach Juan Dixon, he's over there just smiling, having a good time. Dressed really, really nice. Boy, was he a player. Jaron Cumberland gets the bucket, cutting to the lane. Eight points for the sophomore early. As Cincinnati's lead extends to 27 to 9, and yeah, Juan Dixon, a fantastic career. He was a senior at Maryland when I was a senior at Syracuse. I was not on the basketball team at Syracuse. He was on the basketball team at Maryland and won a national championship in 2002 with the Terps. You talk about a storybook career for him. He is a legend in the state of Maryland. All-time leading scorer in Terrapins history, still today, 15 years later. And you saw him today in practice, and he's still the best player. I mean, he's he, he was out on the court shooting with his team, and I think one-on-one -on -one to 11, he might, he, might, yeah, yeah, yeah. he might win. He still has it. He had his boys out there with him, too. So he had what, some reinforcements if he needed them. I hope they give him time to build this program because he's a young man with a bright mind, a vision for what he wants to do. It just takes time to build talent when you're only averaging about 53 points per game. 57 points per game, you need to be able to recruit some guys and work them into a, a system that you are going to employ for that university. Of course, Coppin State is in Baltimore, Maryland, and that is not only where Juan Dixon is from, but very near the University of Maryland, where he plays collegiately. So, well known in the basketball circles, and some very strong basketball cir circles out east. Three-pointer, Cumberland rattles through. He's the first to double digits with 11, and the Bearcats literally cannot miss here in the first half 12 for 12 from the field four for four from downtown and Cumberland looked at coach Cronin and said I can hit on the wrist I want the hand one fight for me coach 17th time in his career Jaron Cumberland is in double figures oh, got a little shuffle right there but the cats are getting through screens they're all locked in, and you have to do a lot of work just to score. And the last two baskets, they have come down and left the right crossovers and made shots. But if you have to do that every time, instead of ball movement, you have to sit over there and do one-on-one -on -one creation, the Cats will win that battle nine out of ten times. Juan Clayton with a good-looking shot there for Coppin State. Then at the other end, it's poked out of the hands of Jaron Cumberland. Center Council got a hand on it. Bearcats will have the possession. Leading big when we return. Arena. Blue Jackets Live kicks off tonight's broadcast at 6.30 with the puck drop to follow right here on Fox Sports Ohio. Or you can stream it live, as always, on Fox Sports Go. Tom Glenner and Terry Nelson happy to be with you at BB&T Arena where Jaron Cumberland has put on a show here in the first eight minutes. Absolutely on fire from outside. He puts in a lot of time. He wants to be the alpha, and you can only do that by continuing to have an intact mentality. He's four for four, but not just him. Kyle Washington's four for four. Gary Clark's one for one. Trey Scott is two for two. The entire team is 12 for 12. I mean, they're on fire, Tommy. I've never had a game where I was like this. But I tell you what, it's a fun game to be in. 32 points in the first eight minutes. What's the pace of that? Yeah. The pace for how Testing much? my math, huh? 160? Yeah, just about. <laughs> Three-pointer, Justin Jeff. Oh, my The three-pointer make it five for five from downtown. I can already see this in the highlight reels in full speed. I mean, they, they're trying to look to find something that's working right here. 
Back at the other end, Council's three-pointer doesn't go. Trayvon Scott will grab the rebound, and Cumberland will bring it to the offensive end. Left side, Scott. Brooks low post will kick it out. Jennifer on to the right, Cumberland. Thinking about a three, will take it, and there's your first miss of the night for the Bearcats. It took eight minutes and 43 seconds. I tell you what, now you got to take him out because he broke the streak. What's going on? No. That was a good look, and the Cats are locked and loaded. And this team right here is like a puncher who gets hit four or five times to start the ring, and now I'm just going to toy with you because people paid a good ticket to come watch. Diara and Sosame will check in for the first time today. Keith Williams in the ball game now misses a shot driving the lane. Coppin State gets the rebound. Quick shot at the other end falls off by Thomas. Cumberland looks to push. The beauty of it is you got playmakers all around. And he's the guy that can light it up as well. Three-pointer from Diera does not go. All of a sudden, the Bearcats feel stone cold. Cumberland <laughs> will change that after oh. three straight misses. He ties on another three. He has 14 in the first half. There's some guys that are ovens. It takes a while to heat up and a long time to cool down. And then there's microwave guys that are just always accessible and quickly can heat up. And that's exactly what Cumberland is. When he heats up, he can heat up quickly. That was a Sean Kilpatrick game. Oh, yes. Throughout his career, he was heating up quickly like a microwave throughout his four years out on the hardwood. Oh, Cumberland steps back. Now he drives the lane. is fouled as he gets there. So Jaron will go to the free throw line. Going back to my thought on Sean Kilpatrick, the only other player besides Sean Kilpatrick to score double digits in their first two games playing for the University of Cincinnati under Mick Groney. You know who that is? Keith Williams. Yes, sir. As this a freshman. Guy, this guy, as a freshman, can yep. get to double figures every game because he's a guy that is going to be playing against second and 13 guys if you can go that deep as an, as an opponent. But when he gets it, because of the spacing on the floor, when he comes in the game, you already got a dynamic post player down low. You have snipers on the wing. And when Keith gets it, he wants to attack the basket. And that's exactly what his game is. So he's going to get a high percentage shot most of the time. Cumberland hits on the first of two free throws. One more coming. That is no good. Bearcats first missed free throw of the night. Comes about halfway through the first half. 39-13. McCronin's troops in control in the fourth ever meeting between these two teams. It's comes Fulton out to the right. Morgan into the lane. Cumberland tried to swat it away. And the foul will be called on Soseme. That is his first. Lamar Morgan, 6'6", only 185. So even though you look and you have the body type of somebody in the MEAC conference that can compete, when you're playing in a Power 5, or in this case, the AAC, which is a legitimate high five basketball conference, you need a little muscle. When you come in there and you're going to bank around and bump around, when you look at Cumberland, who goes out to a standing ovation, his body looks redefined. He's finally embracing nutrition, embracing smoothies and fruit, which was all chicken fingers and fries before he got here. It's a bit of a transition at times. I've been working on you for five or six years. Man, I'm still to, with chicken fingers. To jump on smoothies and fruit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get it there sooner or later. Lamar Morgan picks up the personal foul. Tommy, cheap food is easy to get. Yes, it is. You can go in the dollar menu in every fast food place, but you want a smoothie, it's six, seven dollars. Seventh team foul called on Coppin State, so a one and one here for Keith Williams. He does not hit the front end. Rebound falls to the Eagles from Coppin State, right to left. In their gray road uniforms with yellow numbers. Will work into the front court. Drive in the lane. Treyor can't hold on to it. Loose basketball picked up by the Bearcats. Jennifer will get across midcourt. This is it out to the right to Moore, and now Jennifer gets it back and resets the offensive attack. Williams, three-pointer, too strong. Moore, the offensive rebound. 
Out to Jennifer. Now a three from Moore. Nothing but that. Moore has a hairpin trigger. He passed that ball out, got his feet set back behind the line, and when that ball comes to him, it's expected to go up. Whenever I see a guy like that that can shoot, instantly you want to get opposite on the inside to rebound the ball because it's going up. Eight different Bearcats have scored in the first half. It's 42-15. Right now, you don't see any offense being ran. You're just trying to get a quality shot without a double team. Sierra trying to find a three-pointer. Yeah, There's Sierra. a long two, had a foot on the line. Either way, it didn't fall through. Babadu is very talented, but he's got to understand pace of the game and when is a good shot and when is not. That same three-point shot moved from left to right is a great shot. That was a bad shot. Here's Davis from the left wing. No good. Moore tracks down the rebound in the corner. Jennifer will set up the offensive attack. We talked about it off the open with Jennifer and Broom. McCronin has... Great depth at that point guard <laughs> position. <laughs> Mama Do. Hey, I tell you what, that's what Mama does with Mama Do. He's not shy whatsoever. He's going to put it up. He's already in the top five right now in shooting <laughs> field goal attempts. Diera has his first points of the game. Cincinnati 8 for 11 from beyond the arc. Quick answer at the other end for Lamar Morgan. I gotta give Eliel my take charge tape. Gotta learn how to take a charge. Can't fall before the player hits you. Off to of the left side, Keith Williams. Now top of the key, Diera, who just hit that three. Nice passing by the Cats. Moore driving the lane, comes off his football, loose in the lane. And so Seme will tie it up in the lane. The arrow favors Coppin State. And the Eagles will get the basketball when we return. Everybody getting in, including the youngster on the three party. 45 to 17 here at BB&T Arena, home of the NKU Norris. Of course, it's his home away from home for McCronin and the Bearcats all season long while Fifth Third Arena undergoes renovations back on at campus. And we will show you more of what Fifth Third Arena is expected to look like. Everything on schedule going very well back in Clifton. And yes. we'll hear from Mick Cronin exactly what that might mean for recruiting and everything else coming up at halftime. So make sure you stay tuned for that. In the meantime, Terry, here in Highland Heights, everything going very well and on schedule for Mick Cronin's troops. You want to know how you go and go about things very well? You shoot 72.7% from the three-point line. The Cats are 8 of 11, shooting 76 for the game, holding their opponent to 1 of 7 from the three-point line, 14%. Everything in favor of the red and black early as the Eagles break the pressure and then will set up in the front court with Clayton. Jennifer will check him defensively. Remember, with all this success, Gary Clark only played four minutes in the first half. So far, picking up two early fouls. Clayton spinning to the lane, kicks it out to the corner. Three ball, Thomas, no. Broom couldn't collect the rebound. <laughs> a lot of flailing out there. They're just trying to get a quality shot. That's a good look. On the fight for the rebound. Foul will be called on Cop State. Right now we're seeing Broom and Jennifer out there together. And when Mick Cronin puts in both his point guards, what's he looking for from his offense, Terry? He's looking for Kane Broom to get loose at the two guards. So right now when that ball goes from left to right, you've got two guys up top that can continue to not just penetrate and shoot, but also drive, draw, and dish. So you, now you got your three-point shooters up there on the perimeter. you got rebounders down there because a true rebounder in Eliel uh, Sosemi and then also Trey Scott but they're going to go over there and get you second shot opportunities because when both of those guys get it, if they have a layup, they'll take it. If not, they'll kick it back out for your, for your three-point shooters. Trevor Moore misses on the front end of the one-and-one. One. Second time that's happened to the Bearcats here in the first half. We're now five for eight from the charity strike. Davis driving into the lane. Karan Davis, the graduate guard out of Philadelphia, is fouled. So Seme will pick up the foul, his second. What Coach Dixon is finding out is that when you play a team like Cincinnati that does not allow you to set up your offense and run effectively, when you play a trapping team, the fear is if I throw it to the wing or the corner, the trap going to come. And if so, what's my contingency plan? 
So what you see a lot is you see a guard look to one side. He says, no, they're going to trap. He goes to the second side. He goes, no, nah, they're going to trap. And end up going one-on-one. -on -one. So if you don't have dynamic playmakers with the ball, it makes for a long night because you end up taking bad shots, which is just as bad as a turnover. Free throw from Davis falls through. Bearcats back to the offensive end. So nine different Bearcats scores so far in the first half, including a hot start from Kyle Washington, who misses for the first time tonight. Got to heat back up. See, right now, no offense is being ran. It was one guy coming down just trying to make it happen, and you can't do that against the Cincinnati team. Crazy schedule for Coppin State to start the season. They played Friday night at Oregon, then flew all the way across the country to play ECU in Greenville, North Carolina, then traveled here to Cincinnati where they face the Bearcats tonight. And tomorrow night, they will play their fourth game in eight days when they face Cleveland State 250 miles up the road. I tell you what, as a student athlete, I love it. <laughs> well, well, welcome to Coppin State, yes, Juan. Yes, well, you want to play every day. You, if I can get out of practice and play games every day, Absolutely, but the problem is you want to go to your next game not losing by 45. Jacob Evans jumper doesn't fall through. Eagles able to collect the rebound. It's Davis. Bearcats suddenly have gone two plus minutes without scoring. Well, that's expected when you play against a team. When you play Cincinnati, you're always going to have a team that has the ball's nearly turned over. But you go through these lows because you're making substitutions. The key thing is you want to make sure that your defense is steady because it's okay to go for a two-minute stretch where you don't score, but if your defense is there, if you're still making the right basketball plays, eventually you'll hit one, and then that one will turn into four or five in a row. Cronin certainly has rotated the lineup here in the first half. Room from the free throw line, no good, and something that Mick does often in practice, I saw it today in shoot around and you see it very often is that he is constantly changing his lineup you can't go to practice and, and see five guys playing again oh well that's who's starting tonight he mixes it up because he knows real life situations call for it hey you got a son you know you can get him two pair of pants and eight shirts and that's clothes for three months <laughs> different combinations I mean, that's might need three pairs of pants because yeah, he's gonna rip through one yeah, see that's exactly what coach Cronin has i mean he's got different combinations he can throw at the floor at any time you've already seen two point guards on the floor at once. You've already seen two centers on the floor at once. So he'll have eventually at some point all five ball handlers on the floor. You'll see no, meaning that at your, at your four, you'll have Gary Clark, who's now a ball handler and a shooter, but four other guys that can stretch the floor perimeter and shoot threes. Gary Clark came out at the 16-minute mark after picking up his second personal foul, and he sets to check back in after this free throw from Kyle Washington. Washington on the season. Six for six from the strike, make it seven for seven. That's good because he's a guy, if he's hitting in the 80% clip, watch out because he's going to get fouled a lot because when he catches that ball down low, he's very demonstrative, he's strong, he's aggressive. He's going to get the shot up regardless of if you have great defense or not. Whether he makes it or not doesn't matter because he's just trying to get that thing up there and he will bully his way. Clark gets the rebound off the free throw miss, kicks it out to Jennifer, who hammers through a three-pointer. Clark easing closer to that 900 rebound. He's already in the 1,000-point club. Checks back in the game on his birthday, gets the rebound and the assist. Fourth rebound for Gary Clark tonight. Clark, the 51st member of the 1,000-point club. Of course, my broadcast partner, part of the 100-point club at UC. <laughs> <laughs> Similar, but different accolades. Shots fired. Okay. All right. Trey Thomas in the meantime draining a shot. I mean, I'm right. You are. Uh, I'm wrong. Right. Point club. You are wrong for that. Oh. Uh, at the other end, <laughs> while Terry tries to collect himself after that one. We get a lot of opportunities to work with you this year, partner. I got to get him in. Yeah, get him in. Hey, we'll take one. We still together. Jacob Evans will go to the free throw line for Mick Cronin with 4.13 to play in the first half. Cedric Council picks up its third personal foul. If you just turned on your TV and you see, okay, the score is 50 to 21, and you got guys who have been out for a while that you forgot started the game and were absolutely destroying when they were in the game. Cumberland has 15 points. He checks back in the game. Kyle Washington started the game off with eight quick points. And then Gary Clark came in 
got his two quick fouls, come back into the game, and he's got four, four rebounds in a small stretch. This Cats team just continued to throw guys at you in waves. Jacob Evans with six after making two free throws. The Bearcats shooting 65%, even hotter from downtown, 9 of 13. They have 27 points off threes. That's six more than the Eagles have as a team here in the first half. And the thing is, the way Coach Cronin coaches in practice, there's no room for you to enjoy any lead because we call it the Jack B. Nimble experience, but he's going to put fire under you every particular drill and make sure that you are focused and concentrated. Well, full court pressure still coming. The Eagles do a nice job breaking it this time and get it down low to Lamar Morgan, who will dunk it home. Yeah, he got one for the highlight reel. Kane Broom, three-pointer is an air ball. You aren't going to see that very often. Didn't come close to catching the rim. Oh, Garrett with the Kenyon Martin-style block. Just grabs it out of the air. Cumberland, three-pointer short, but the rebound right to Evans. And Bounce nice pass to Washington. No. Offensive rebound. Third opportunity doesn't go. Gary Clark has the rebound. And has no it hooked away. <laughs> Clark a little frustrated. There was no foul as he hustles back defensively. You know, last year in the UConn, he lost a tooth. <laughs> That's right. And so now he's just looking like, can I get a call? Traylor driving the lane. Shot is short on the collision with Jacob Evans. Bearcats will bring the rebound in the front court. Transition three. Trailing after getting up. Missed the three. Cumberland with the putback. Cumberland is weak side rebounding has increased. His knowledge of the game is growing game by game. He's almost like an amoeba where he finds out how the game is being played and he makes the adjustment. Jaron came into this one averaging 15 points per game through the first two of the season. He has 17 here in the first half against the Eagles as Cincinnati has opened up a 30-point advantage. Shot off the mark by Thomas. Washington, without any trouble, will collect the rebound. Coach Cronin wants to see some offense. Yes, it's easy to run, and he wants them to run when they have the opportunities, but he also wants them to execute because they have to work on it. Against different types of teams, you're not going to just be able to press and shoot chaotic threes. Washington's three-pointer no good. Gary Clark, sick rebound, puts it up and through. I talked with Gary Clark on the way leaving as he was leaving pregame, and I said, what's one of your goals? He wants to be the all-time double-double leader in the Cronin era. He's got 19, and he comes down, and he needs 23 to beat Yancey. Kyle Washington taking a look at the hoop and helping the Bearcats to a huge first-half advantage. He's, he, he's always ready to go. He's high intensity, brings a lot of energy for us. Kyle Washington has brought the energy tonight. 11 points, four rebounds, and has provided that presence in the paint for Cincinnati. He is intimidating. I mean, you look at what he does. He's very intelligent. Only The only guy I know that knows every mascot in Division I. <laughs> it's I mean, amazing. It is amazing, but... He is so active around the basket, and you have to give him the space because of the dynamic playmakers that the Cats can just throw at you in waves. Guys that can shoot threes, guys that can cross you and get you that little herky-jerky off the dribble, and you pull away, and when you do that, you free up Kyle to get offensive rebounds. Set 11 points, he has nine in 11 minutes. Helping the Bearcats to their big first-half advantage. I mean, how about Gary Clark? Seven rebounds in seven minutes. Not bad. Kane Broom pokes it away. Kane Broom driving the lane. Oh. Drew the foul, but did not get the bucket to fall through. He plays at so much pace. It looks like he's on one of those hoverboards. He's gliding because he, he shoots the passing lane, and then he knows that he's got somebody on his back. So he goes up, draws the foul, puts a little English on it. Should have put some Spanish on there because it wasn't enough English. Kane Broom. How do you end up at Cincinnati? Well... Let's find out from the man himself. And that's one of the reasons why I came here, because I felt like this is a school that always wants to prove something. You know, we most of the times we are underranked, and um, I feel like this it was the kind of people I need to be around to kind of succeed at this level. So um, I definitely feel like people feel that way, but at the end of the day, it's basketball. And um, if you do everything right, if you prepare yourself, then it shouldn't be anything different. 
Well, Broom certainly has been an important piece of the puzzle for Mick Cronin for this year. And obviously next as he will play out his eligibility was a huge talent previously when he was at Sacred Heart. For a while led the nation in scoring before transferring to UC, finding a new home as Clayton drains the three-pointer. He has seven, a bright spot right now for Juan Dixon. As we have one minute remaining in the first half, and Cincinnati's lead is 29. That's good. When he gets that ball, he looks to be aggressive, and he should be. And you shouldn't be upset with the amount of shot attempts that he gets because when you throw Kyle the ball, that's exactly what he's prone to do, and that's what he's supposed to do, is be aggressive down there and put pressure on the opposing team's bigs. Three-pointer from the corner is no good from Drummond. Take on Drummond, the freshman out of Newport News, Virginia. Doesn't get it to fall. About a two-second differential between game clock and shot clock. Bearcats will set this up as though it's a last look of the half, but not necessarily will that be the case. Over Juan Dixon, he's at least smiling right now. You know, coming in, it wasn't going to be easy today, and certainly has not been so for the Eagles. Jaron Cumberland has made it look easy, although his three-pointer there does not fall. Quickly the other way, Lamar Morgan will let it fly from midcourt, and it is well short and no good. So 20 minutes of basketball in the books here at bb and t Arena. Still 20 more to come with UC leading the Eagles 55 to 26. When we return from break, we'll take a look at the renovations to Fifth Third Arena. You're watching Bearcat Basketball on Fox Sports Ohio. Trying to hit 100 points for the third straight game and in command as we get set to start the second half here at BB&T Arena. Let's take a look at the leading scores. Seven for the Eagles and Dewan Clayton and Darren Cumberland, the only one in double figures for the Bearcats as it's been a balanced offensive attack, but Cumberland with 17 to lead Cincinnati. Tom Glitter and Terry Nelson with you as Cumberland and the Bearcats will come out onto the hardwood and a change for Mick Cronin to start the second half. We do not see Kyle Washington and instead Aliel Soseme will start the second half with a chance to get him some minutes right out of the locker room. Gary Clark will miss the three-pointer and the Eagles will grab the rebound and turn and go the other way left to right. The beauty of the fact that Cumberland has 17 first half points. Second half, it could be somebody totally different that comes out and establishes them themselves early. Three pointer at the other end for Clayton does not fall through. Rebound into the hands of Cumberland. Kane Broom, the floor general, set it up as the Bearcats in their home whites. Here's Sosemi. Saw good minutes in the first half off the bench. Dumps it down low with good vision and finds Gary Clark, the birthday boy. He wants to do what he does best, which is rebound and look for other guys so they can shoot. And he can get in rebound position right there. He had great vision. He saw Gary Clark shoot to the nose of the rim for an easy layup. Seven points, seven rebounds for Clark here tonight. Clayton driving the lane will kick it out to the near side. Now back to Clayton, six to shoot, gets the lane, uh, nifty move to scoop it up and in. That was beautiful. Put it up in your left hand in there. Should be a blocking foul right there. Cumberland at the other end will draw the block. And you watch this, he catches it, quarter turns, looks, takes a dribble, man cheats over and leaves Clark wide open under the basket. He just catches it and puts it up. But one thing Cumberland's gonna do is, if there were 10 fast breaks and a half, eight of those fast breaks will be Cumberland on the left side running. And because he has such great vision, he's going so fast, the freight train, that he can use that hop step, he can use that Euro step. All he wants to do is chip you on one side or the other, get contact. He doesn't want to avoid you. He wants contact. He seeks it, and he wants to put it off the glass. He's probably in the top five in our conference in M1. 17 and seven. For Cumberland, if he struggled anywhere tonight, it's been right there at the free throw strike, but he gets his buddy Gary Clark a rebound and a putback. Clark now on the cusp of a double-double with nine points and eight rebounds. Come on, struggling. Huh? That's a birthday well, present. Yeah, Cumberland one for four for the free throw strike, so <laughs> there's a blemish 
on his score sheet right now. It's right there. That's three-pointer there from Karan Davis. Get you some, Karan. Karan coming out here in the second half, ready to play. So Semi loses it, regains control in the lane, kicks it out to the right, Evans. On second thought, nothing but net on the three-pointer. Well, he's not going to come out of the game talk about so Semi because he makes mistakes. He makes up for it. He tones it, grabs the ball, finds Evans. Evans with a little herky jab step, with a rocker step, puts him on skates, pulls up for the three. Evans on the cusp of double figures now with nine. Thomas will work it out between the circles. Just over two minutes gone, second half. Cincinnati jumped out to a big lead early and never looked back. Cats are switching everything and Davis can't connect in the lane, driving to his right. Quickly the other way, Cumberland slicing and dicing in the lane and picking up two more. If you want to get some points in the Cats system, run the floor. Whether you are a big, whether you're a wing player, if you run the floor, they have such great vision. And Coach Cronin is the first one to say advance the basketball. And the fact that you have so many playmakers out there, people on this team really enjoy making the extra pass, Tommy. Cumberland has 19 after that last bucket, and here's another look at it. He coming across that left side, so he pulls the defense over to the right, and then he puts it up, scoop underneath the outstretched arms of the defender off the glass, and what a game he's having so far. Coach Cronin and that staff over there, I'm telling you, they, have, they work tirelessly. They know they have a squad that they have to push because they're so talented, because they're so deep. This staff has been together for six years, and they're together. They love each other. See Coach Jackson sitting in that picture right there, associate head coach Larry Davis, Savino. I mean, this is a great group of guys to be around. In fact, it's Saturday. We leave for warmer weather. Going to the Cayman Islands there, Tommy G. No, I hope you have your passport. I got my passport. Finally came. I'm saying what, the game of basketball has been so good to me, and everybody that I know who's played this game, I got a chance to travel the world, be in the Final Four, on TV, do radio. Now, now you're going to the Cayman Islands. Come on, man. About it. That's enough. Stop it. 100-point club. Evans out between the circles. <laughs> so Seme on the right brings it to the free throw line. Clark, three ball, off the iron, no good. Fighting back into the front court for the Eagles. The Cats are identifying their guys. They're switching on everything. The fact that you got bigs now that can stay in front of guards. Watch Elliot. Oh, the shooting at passing lanes. Deflections are what they try to count here. Oh, the crossover step back. Clayton shot doesn't go. Kane Broom had the rebound, but it was poked away by Chad Andrews. Fulton. Then driving the lane, the shot is no good by Davis. Theron Davis, the native of Philadelphia, couldn't get it to fall through. Saturday, number five, Wisconsin is determined to prove they belong in the college football playoff race. And on Saturday, they host Michigan in a Big Ten showdown. Don't miss the action at 11.30 a.m. Eastern on Fox or stream it live on Fox Sports Go, where every game is everything. Clark on the left elbow, hands it off, Evans, stops, pops, is fouled on the effort, and Jacob Evans, the junior, will head to the free throw line. Trey Thomas called for the foul as first. Beautiful elbow rub back there, you throw it to the elbow, top of the key, you give it to Gary Clark, everybody guts, Jacob Evans comes and plays off of that, and because he had the first step on him, he jumps up, and he shoots so beautiful, when he jumps, he jumps straight up, a lot of guys float. He jumps straight up and down, gets hit on the elbow, converts the first of two free throws. Evans tax on one more. He's now in double figures for the 45th time in his career, second time this season. So you sure your passport came in? It's just yeah. coincidentally, mine was up for renewal and it came in yesterday. Not <laughs> saying that I, I, I have a current passport if, if yours doesn't we do get kind of like brothers. in the mail. Yeah, we do like brothers. I mean, maybe we'll work things out. Mine came out. I'm Terry, Terry in and you're Tommy G. Whatever. Like yes. Yeah. I'm just saying if... if if your passport gets lost in the mail. I got it. I got it. I came heard, in I last the week. Game nice this time of year. Lamar Morgan cutting to the lane. Drops it down low. 
Good nice ball. movement by the Eagles into the corner. Three-pointer. good basketball. Good. That's good basketball. Coach Dixon's over there coaching. He's pleased with that. He just wants to see progress. Whoa. Kane Broom. <laughs> In the flash of an eye, cutting to the lane, putting it up and through. He's been quiet tonight with just four, but picks up two more. You know what? You got other guys that pick up the slack. Nobody cares who's scoring here, but everybody's going to have an opportunity to be aggressive and look to make plays if it's their turn, if their number is called. Kyle Washington seeks to check in, but everybody on the floor right now is in attack mode, except Sosemi. He's a guy who's going to be attack mode defensively and on the rebounds, but they have playmakers in every position. Thomas working the perimeter with Gary Clark in his face. He'll let it fly too strong, so Sosemi <laughs> grabs the rebound and Gary Clark there to help if needed. Clark will kick it out to the right. Evans. Now Sosemi, top of the key, Keith Williams. Too much for Clark. Go to work. Top of the key, Broom. Shot clock was down to nine as Broom drove the lane. He was fouled by Karan Davis. That is his second. Broom. Showing he wants to get in on the scoring action. And we have a timeout on the floor. Larry Nelson back with you at BB&T Arena where they are looking at this shot. Jacob Evans went down in a heap of pain and he is being attended to during the timeout and they are, went to the monitor to look at the three-pointer to see if his foot was on the line. They're looking at whether it was a three or a two. So that is what the review is on the far side of the hardwood right now. But it was Jacob Evans who went down in a heap of pain. Didn't appear as though there was any contact with anybody. So we'll keep an eye on things and see if we get any update from the UC bench. But first things first, they're trying to decide if it's a two or a three. And they have made said decision. It doesn't look like they had a definitive view of it. We couldn't see it. it looked like he was behind the line. And I said, you go ahead and you give them the three. Huh. I think they're going to knock it down to two based on the fact they're spending a lot of time at big court. By the way, I don't think it's going to make a difference in the outcome of this game. You see Juan Dixon over there, 2002 national champion, and Nick Cronin. Different situations for the two head coaches, a 12-year veteran and Nick Cronin. And Juan Dixon, who has come on to rebuild this Coppin State program that was picked to finish 12th in their conference in the act this year. Jacob Evans is back in the locker room now getting evaluated. Shot falls off the mark. Cumberland unable to grab the offensive rebound. And Trey Thomas will bring it in. I would imagine Evans will be kept out for the remainder of this one for precautionary reasons, if nothing else. And an offensive foul will be called on Drummond. Let's take one look and see if we can see anything that happened. And right there. You saw right in the corner of your screen as he goes down to his knees. That's going to the timeout. And he's grabbing his left leg or his hip. Yeah, he was so. pointing to his lower back. I just hope he didn't get a slip disc or something there. So Semi spinning in the lane will be called for a travel. For Cincinnati, that is just their third turnover in 25 minutes of basketball. Well, that back could get you. I've, I've had that a couple times, Tommy. Absolutely. I remember just playing with my daughter in the, the, the nursery at church, and all of a sudden my back went out. I just <laughs> picture a guy on the ground laying down in pain in the fetal position. I'm telling you, it is something. It is, that's the kind of pain that you don't want to feel, and I just hope that's not the case. Well, the entire medical staff, Angelo Colosimo and Bob Mangini, went back to the dressing room with Jacob to attend to him. Keep an eye on that. Michael Donovan's back there as well. Into the lane. Thomas's floater doesn't go. Tried to push it back up. Keith Williams came out of the lane with a rebound. Cincinnati is five on three the other way. Cumberland with the advantage. Wide open as three-pointer rattles off. There was three guys in the middle of the paint. Nobody was on the weak side. That's where three or four of your missed shots are going to go to the opposite side. Should have had one there there. Leighton can't find the jump shot. Bearcats suddenly have gone two minutes and 20 seconds without scoring. Keith Williams cutting the lane and ending that streak. Keith Williams is 
a junkyard dog. He will get points in bunches from offensive rebounds, from cutting to the basket. Guys looking for him because scores know how to score. It doesn't take the ball to be in their hands all the time to get buckets. Williams, the tenth different Bearcat to score tonight for McCronin. Under 13 minutes to play. Bearcats doubling up the Eagles 70 to 35. Pace has seemed to slow down a lot. The Cats are no longer pushing at a breakneck speed with their press. They're conserving energy, but they want to be more efficient on the offensive end. Cumberland tried to force the pass down low to Gary Clark. Ends up being deflected, so not a turnover for Cincinnati. A couple subs coming for the Bearcats. This here Brooks and Justin Jennifer, who both saw good minutes in the first half, check in. Now, I played on teams that was deep, 11, 12 deep, just like this catch team is, and sometimes the fans can get addicted to highlight real plays. And the energy in the building wants to see a three-pointer. They want to see a crossover, a dunk. They want to see all this stuff as Gary Clark gets a, a basket out of the out-of-bounds. That's the best kind of assist to get a dead ball out-of-bounds assist. You rack those up easily. Clark has 11 points here on his 23rd birthday. He needs two more rebounds for the 20th double-double of his Bearcats career. How about that? Jaron Cumberland with the deflection. When you're in practice and you watch these guys, and they get a deflection, they're looking over at those managers and telling them to put that deflection yeah. on the wall. The number is 40. Magic number. Well, sure, during games, they're making sure T.J. Wolf walks right. down too, right? <laughs> Inbounds pass to Gary Clark. Gives it off. Keith Williams lays it up and in, so he'll get a dime there as Williams has four. Yeah, but the freshman should know to give it back to the senior on his birthday. Come on, hey. big fella. Give it back. And you know who's not at all concerned about that? The big Keith, fella, Gary Keith, Clark. Uh, yeah, well, Gary, Gary Clark, Clark is not. Yeah, he, but, he's happy to have the youngin get some points. No, he can get some points on his birthday. But on my birthday, give me the, give me the rock, baby. Under 12 minutes to play. Where's the birthday cake at? Uh, it's right there in his hands, dribbling it. That's okay. the cake. Want to blow on that? Just, just figured it was being delivered to our broadcast position after the game. Nas Brooks averaging seven boards off the game, uh, off the bench. Williams, three ball from the left side, no good. There's the ninth rebound for Gary Clark, and he'll kick it out to Williams. Give it back to the birthday boy. Cumberland over to Williams, near side. That's the quarter turn. Brooks trying to back his way in the lane is triple teamed and wisely gets rid of it. Got to move the ball. He got to swing it. He got to swing it. On to the right, Jennifer. Now it's Clark towards the corner. Eight to shoot. Clark gets to the lane, puts it up, and rolls off the iron. No good. And he will head to the stripe following the foul. Gary Clark, a senior now for Mick Cronin. 11 points tonight. Bearcats have the route on. That do not show up in the stat sheet, but uh, he wins them with scoring, scoring the basketball as well. So, uh, you know, he, he, he's he, as coach, you got to have an answer. Like he's an answer to a lot of things. It could be, you know, who's going to guard this guy, or who's going to get the ball at the end of the game, or who's going to get a big rebound. Gary Clark, the answer for Mick Cronin, while well, he's a major problem tonight for yes. Coppin State. <laughs> Well, the problem always has a solution or an answer, and that answer is Gary Clark. Yes, he's been a problem on the glass for him, but he's the answer to a lot of missed shots. And a lot of things that the Bearcats want to do is they want to make sure that they get some continuity on the offense. Yes, you got some three-point shooters. Yes, you got guys that drive. But you also need somebody that can grab it off the glass and put it in when nobody else is making shots. And Clark, in limited minutes, only 17 minutes, 11 points, 9 rebounds, a chance to get that up to 13 but he also wants to get those double-doubles. Clark is right now second in the Cronin air in double-doubles with 19. He told me before the game he wants that record. That's one of the personal goals he wants, and he wants to be in that upper echelon of power forwards in the pantheon of UC. To be up there, talking about, you know, great point, great power forwards. Point guards? Uh, point forwards. guard, yeah. power, power point guards, Grant Hill style. <laughs> well, Gary picks up his 12th point and then checks out his mother and nine-year-old brother drove in for the game today to celebrate his birthday here tonight awesome. at BB&T Arena. I said, is there going to be any celebration afterwards? He said, no, maybe a little cake or something, and then and then head to bed. Yeah, they were having some wings earlier when I was having this discussion with them. Bears three-pointer doesn't fall through. Jennifer will pop out the rebound to his team out, teammate, Diera. On the right side, Trevor Moore. 
Down low, Diera spinning to the hoop is fouled. And he will get a chance at the free throw line with two shots. Now, as a sophomore, you're going to be able to slow down, catch it, quarter turn, and find out where the defense is before you make that move. Chad Andrews Fulton in a bit of pain after the foul. Three points for Mamadou so far tonight. And make it four. Tomorrow night, LeBron James and the Cavaliers return home from their four-game road trip to face Blake Griffin and the L.A. Clippers. Cavaliers Live starts at 7 p.m. with the game to follow right here on Fox Sports Ohio or stream it live on Fox Sports Go. That's a win. Cavs going into L.A. LeBron loves. Out here. No, oh, it's no, out here? Cleveland. No, not uh, here. Okay. But All right. Not in L.A. That's right. They finished their uh, week-long four-game road trip three and one. I was just in L.A. I took a drive down to Long Beach. Looking oh, for some Terry man. Nelson you were looking statues. for the, you find the statue? They must have removed no. it when they removed Saddam Hussein. No. It was two guys they wanted to remove at the same time. <laughs> I just, I figured there'd be somewhere that pays tribute to the, the life and times. I think Snoop Dogg, they replaced, replaced mine with Snoop Dogg. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Right. Right side, Tr Trevor Moore. Looking down the long turn. There you go. There you go, big fella. Now you make the pass out. This guy hit the side of the backboard. Diera trying to get it out. Turns it over. Eagles into the front court. Bucket and the foul. For Joel Boyce. Yes, but you also like to see Nas run the floor and be able to protect the rim. You're running right next to him. You're looking to get a deflection from behind instead of going to the rim to protect it. And Justin Jennifer right there has got to sit down and form some wall at the rim so your shot blockers can get themselves in position to block shots. Jennifer picks up the personal foul. The free throw. My Boyce is good. He has his first three points. Of the game. Freshman guard out of Jamaica, Queens, good play, New York. Good play. The strength, the upper body strength. Nasir Brooks. 11th different Bearcat to find the score sheet. I'm calling him the Fresh Prince of Clifton. He's from West Philadelphia, born and raised. On the playground is where he's been most of his days. <laughs> 11 different Bearcats have scored, which means just one scholarship player yet to tally for Mick Cronin. That is Soseme. I'm guessing he'll have an opportunity to do so before it's all said and done here in Highland Heights, Kentucky. If you're just joining us and wondering why the Bearcats are playing on a court with NKU's logo at midcourt, well, this is home away from home for Cincinnati this year as Fifth Third Arena back on campus is renovated. Of course, they reopen the arena with Ohio State next fall, a year from now. A year from tomorrow, I think. Isn't that game scheduled for November 17th? That's going to be a, a, a real a crazy, crazy time. Sell out first game. That's going to be a tough ticket. I would love to open up every year with a quality opponent. Somebody that will draw. Opponent. Yeah, oh, absolutely. yeah, that's awesome. But you know, the cats are going to come out now. They're going to use this, this weave action, this motion action. And now you got Justin Jennifer coming off, looking to throw it down low. Oh, the step back. Piero will get the offensive rebound. No, he will not. Taken out of his hands by Treor. Both these teams playing their third game in seven days for Gotham State and Juan Dixon. They have to play again tomorrow night at Cleveland State. It's been tougher on the Eagles as well because they had to travel to Oregon to ECU. Turnover for the Eagles gives it back to the Bearcats. But now off until Monday. Travel Saturday to Grand Cayman, as you mentioned. And then a little bit of different situation for McCronin as the team will play three games in three days. And they are prepared for it. The way they practice every day, the way they get after it against another quality opponent, which is the other half of their team, as Williams goes up ends up dropping it out and turning it over and McCronin is going to make a change in his lineup after that turnover. Well, the freshman's got to learn to utilize his teammates. He's always wanting to put the ball up and he's got to be able to make plays for his opponent and not be selfish on a fast break where you have three players running the fast break with you. Six turnovers tonight for the red and black. Eight minutes to play, second half. Cincinnati well on their way to win number three. Jennifer sold out to try to get the steal, did not, and then a nice move by Boyce to lay it up and in. He has five. Coach Cronin wants to see a little bit more continuity right there. That's his shot. 
Three doesn't go. Diera unable to grab the rebound. And the Eagles will have the basketball when we return. Cincinnati in control. 79-44. And how fast can our young guys get ready, you know, to contribute in those games? And it, it comes from, it starts with his, the leadership of me, Cal, and Jacob. But, you know, are they, are they willing to listen and take it in to be ready for those big games when we tell them that certain things that they do in practice is, isn't going to work in the games, those big games? Well, if there's somebody you should be listening to on Mick Cronin's roster that's a veteran, it's Gary Clark. And the youngsters got to be ready because come December, the schedule gets very difficult. Right now, that stretch of four games, three of those four are ranked in the top 25. Three of those four games will not be played in the greater Cincinnati area. And it'll be a good test for Mick Cronin and the Bearcats. It will be a great test. You play these games right now where you early blowouts and you think it's gonna be like this all the time, where it's gonna be 100 point games, but you need games like this to get develop continuity, get your five new players. You have four freshmen and a new point guard that transferred in. So you have to teach the system with them, get everything acclimated, and then you go into this tough stretch of the season in the first couple weeks of December where you really get your medal tested going into the AAC. You know which game in that stretch I wish I could go to? It's that. Pauley Pavilion. Oh, yeah. That's a bucket list location there. You think you can sneak me on the plane? We don't need any passports for that one, Terry. I'll ask the big baller brand if they can get you on this since their son probably won't be playing. Oh, I, uh, we'll stay away from that one right now. <laughs> Unfortunate situation with the UCLA basketball team out of China. We can get you and LeVar Ball to play one on two, one on two with Michael Jordan. I guarantee you still probably lose by 50, but certainly. Yeah, I won't help much there. <laughs> but it changes the situation going into that game now with three players suspended, but, but talk about Hollow grounds in college basketball. UCLA, That's they they may make them, right? them write a term paper and get them right back eligible. Man, they start losing. Left side three, way off the mark. Uh, the ball family, one of the balls will have to write a term paper in order to get back <laughs> into good graces. They're not going to continue to sit those guys out. They're going to sit over there and make a big debate. The minute it quiets down in the media, they will be back on the floor. And right there, you've seen a great offensive rebound by Elia Sosemi, who reminds me a lot of Andre Drummond with his constant motor around the rim. Sosemi out of the score sheet for the first time tonight. Now all 12 scholarship players for Mick Cronin have tally points. Look at the head of Justin Jennifer looking for his guys. They run, wide open shot from a knockdown, and they shoot it. Oh! Trevor Moore had the three. Aircats after... Scoring nine three-pointers in the first half have scored just one in the second half after coming out of the locker room. Kyle Washington and Trevon Scott have checked in. And actually, Washington's going to have to wait a moment because so Semes headed to the free throw line. Now, you're mentioning Trevon Scott. Opposed yes. to Trey Scott. Yes. I was told today at shoot around by Andre Fouché. Mother Rosie is tuning in down in Louisville tonight. So, hi, Rosie. That he wants to go by Trayvon here in the 17 18 season. He can go by whatever he wants, as long as he continues to hustle, make plays like he's been doing. I'm quite sure his mom, Anita, who's a successful basketball coach out there, a coach out in Georgia, is quite all right with that because that's what she named him. Mama called him Trey. I'm going to call him Trey. When Andre Fouché tells me what to call somebody, 95% <laughs> of the time, I go along with what Trey tells me. Okay. Kick down to the left, Boyce. Boyce has had some good looks. Kyle Washington and other plans on that one. He like he was pinning the tail on the donkey. Washington with great ball movement gets the pass in the lane. And Kyle Washington is in the double figures with 11. There's some wisdom on the bench. When you have to come out the second half and sit on the bench and sit for a long time, you wise up pretty quickly as to what you're supposed to do, what the coach is expecting you to do. And it may be different from what you think you should do. Clayton will kick it out to the far side. Drummond. Now back to the right. Into the lane. Trey. Scott with the steal. Over to the left. Cumberland. Cumberland cutting the lane. Puts it up. No good. Put it up, big fella. Ah. Scott got the offensive rebound. Cincinnati will reset. Cumberland three ball is smacked in the face as he took the shot. 
No foul is called. <laughs> now watch these four guys on one side behind the back. Throws it over there to Trey. Trey finds the nose of the rim right there. The other big man. I love interior passing. I like when big guys make intelligent plays right there. Kyle Washington with his hands always ready offensively to catch and finish around the basket. And that's a sure assist if Kyle catches it that close. After Cumberland smacked in the face, the foul is called on Cincinnati. Their 15 foul. Justin Jennifer with an athletic move. Gets the deflection. Knock it down. Keeps it in play. And then hammers home the three-pointer. I like it when guys earn their money. He comes over there, you get that steal. You get the nice play saving and come back in transition to hit that shot. Oh, he earned it all there. Earned the possession and then hammered through the three-pointer. At the other end, Trey Orr lays it up and in, and Justin Jennifer started on Monday and showing why he is a starter for Mick Cronin, whether or not he's in that initial five. Well, you see in high school, he's that option quarterback, that beer quarterback, won a state championship as a junior, gets it back, give it to me, baby, I'm open. Let me spot up right there and make my money right. I put the work in, let me go ahead and let me eat some too. 11 three-pointers on 28 attempts. Tonight for Mick Cronin's crew, for those of you without a calculator handy, that's 39%. Cotton State just 3 of 16 from downtown. Cats are on pace to get their third 100-point game. They got a bunch of guys that are absolutely hungry. They want to be the one to get them there. It'll be a little tight tight now. Four, four minutes left, 14 points away from 100 uh, points for three straight. Justin Jennifer has other plans. Justin said, watch your mouth, Tommy G. I got this. 12 <laughs> points for Justin Jennifer. And Cincinnati inches a little bit closer to history with under four to play. Cats are starting to get that feeling again. They can go through these lows where they're scoring no points and they're just sort of at the status quo defensively. And then they get a couple steals, a couple deflections. They get out on the break, get some easy baskets. Before you know it, they're running off consecutive baskets. I love that kick ahead pass by Justin Jennifer. So strong with the ball. And it flicks off of his wrist and it goes from one side to the other. Williams will swing it on to the right. Moore and then Scott is fouled. Now at the top of the key. Mick Cronin's Bearcats, this is the most prolific three-game stretch in his 12 years as head coach. The only question remaining, will they get to 100 for the third straight game? We'll find out next. Falling big time tonight, 324 left. Juan Dixon with a great career in Maryland, all-time leading scorer, two-time All-American national champion, 2,269 points. And Take a look at that All-American team from 2002, because there's a name on there that Bearcats fans will recognize. Steve Logan, Jay Williams was pretty good. Drew Gooden as well. That's a heck of a team. Where in the heck is Dan right. Dickow, huh? Dan Dickow had a great career at Gonzaga. Yes, he did. I mean, you think about that run that Maryland made to the tournament. They were 16 and 15 and 1 in the ACC, regular season champs. They had to beat Kentucky, UConn, Kansas, just to get there. Then they end up playing Indiana in the championship and winning it. They are. That was an unbelievable run. So you talk about a guy who's forever um, a fan favorite and a community favorite. One of the guys who has just gave his life to the state of Maryland and gave everything he had to him. And now he's been rewarded by getting this second head coaching job. He was coach of a women's team last year. Right. But when this opportunity came up, great chance to move Absolutely. back home. Brought his boys with him on the trip. I saw them serving water over on the bench during the game. And I was watching them at the beginning of shoot around his boys. Young, but they can shoot a bit, so not not a surprise considering who their old man is. Right. Three minutes to play here at BB&T Arena. Scott will grab the rebound. Cincinnati now nine points away from 100 points in three consecutive games for the first time ever. And they're going to go to the free throw line and try to pad those stats a little bit. The one thing about Justin Jennifer that makes it so difficult to guard, he has extremely long arms. Look at the powerful upper body but extremely long arms, and he already dribbles at a hunch where he's down low and he's scooting that ball, almost like skipping rocks on water. It's that low as he's dribbling the basketball, and you're trying to reach, and as you reach, he's teaching. Well, behind his back, between his legs, you saw the R2 on the joystick last game, but he's capable of scoring, but he's also looking to make other guys better around him. 
Baker's dozen now for Jennifer after he hits the first of two free throws. Makes the second as well. 14-1 shy of his season and career high of 15 that he scored last Friday in the regular season opener. You've never seen guys up by 30 or 40 in the Cronin era looking and acting like it's, it's you know, they're trying to embarrass the other team. They are locked in and focused, and as long as they're out on the floor, Coach Cronin expects them to play hard and play focused and continue to share the ball. One starter remains in the game for Cronin. That is Kyle Washington, who did not start the second half. Kyle Evans was injured in the second half. He has not returned to the bench, and we have not received any word on his health as Keith Williams drives is fouled, and then will drag things out a little bit further here in Highland Heights, Kentucky. We had some great coaches that graced the floor. Clifton, been there with have been Ed Jucker, Tay Baker. We have Yates, former player and coach. Bob Huggins, we know what he did, and now Coach Cronin has really made a knack for himself. 12 years carving out, recruiting guys to fit his system. Then all of a sudden found these point guards that he just says, I have to do something different with them because they are not like Troy. They're not the cerebral type where Troy was. These guys want to get out and run. Williams has the ball come off his foot. Coppin State will pick it up and bring it to the offensive end. Next game for the Bearcats, as I mentioned, in the Cayman Islands on Monday when they take on Buffalo at 7.30 p.m. Yeah, Justin Jennifer looking always to push the pace. Keith Dave Williams Broom was around. waving them down the floor. Yes. They won. Scott. That yeah, was an offensive foul call on the Bearcats, if so. No, they called the hold. Okay. One official on the, on the yeah, far side. They were side looking line. at each other. Yeah, he was glance across the hardwood. He was walking away. I think that's Tony Green. He was walking the other way to call the offensive foul on Kyle. And the baseline official says, no, we're going to keep it right here. That was a veteran move where you try to pull a guy down and then you fall after he pushes you back. When you got away with a lot of that, you understand exactly what they were doing down there. So the clock stops at 144 to play. And Kyle Washington will go to the free throw line. It is so quiet. You can hear a mosquito burp in London. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Just quiet, man. I'm Kyle Washington, you. one for three. I think Kyle needs some noise. Throw, right? Yeah, he needs some noise. He focuses better. I mean, we've been doing this together for a long time, so I know most of your sayings. That's add that one to the list. Hey, man, they just come. Uh oh. Washington misses them both. Everybody a little anxious now, trying to get to the century mark. He hasn't missed a free throw all year long. He's missed three tonight. Season. Yeah. Ninety seconds remaining. Bearcats trying to get it away defensively. Three ball from the corner. Brownlee doesn't connect. Jennifer is going to get out and run. One, oh. three into the lane. Lost it <laughs> and was fouled as it was taken away. And now Jennifer grabbing his hamstring a little bit. I understand everybody wants to make that history and get to 100 points. But let's be real. You also have to be cautious here. And you don't want anybody getting hurt just to get to 100 points. Well, I don't think they're worrying about getting hurt. Uh, this team is... Mike Redfield does a great job as their strength coordinator of the flexibility. They do yoga. They do a lot of different things that we didn't do back when we played. I don't know. We did like we weren't doing, That Final Four team wasn't doing yoga. Oh, uh, no. We, did, we were doing like dancing and all other kind of stuff for our, our stuff. You know, running on the track. It's just basketball. The, what has transpired over the last 20 years is just amazing. What guys do now to get in shape. They've got nutrition centers now where guys can go in there and get a smoothie and get some shakes at nighttime. Justin Jennifer reshaped his body and now, I mean, he just has this attack mentality where he just believes he's an alpha on the floor at all times and you need that at your point guard position. 16 for Jennifer is a new career high with just over a minute to play. Bearcats are going to need two possessions and a three-pointer to the get to get 100. Out it's good defense by Trey Scott. Hey, when he makes a shot like that, because that was even better offense with an outstretched arm, great defense by Trey Scott, squishing off your four guy with the nimbleness of feet. Well, the fans anxious here, hoping for the Bearcats to hurry up and get to the century mark. The three-pointer is no good, but Trevor Moore is fouled. 
And the freshman from Houston will go to the free throw line with a chance at three free throws. And if he makes them all, it would bring the Bearcats within a bucket of 100. Funny thing is, he was the walk on. Yeah, it comes the 2020 club. You know what the 2020 club is? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah, those are guys that get in when you're up 20 or down 20. I, I thought it was the law firm of Bart, Martin, and Kaz. <laughs> we can go with that. That sounds better than 2020 club. Free throw no good by Trevor Moore. And fans are getting That's upset. the first one he missed this year. Look, they get free conies first. or something to get 100? Oh, but it's history. Terry, oh, there's a free throw good. So you can't get in the game so now in 45 seconds and then hold the ball at half no, court. Your walk on is going to have to shoot a three for the 100 mark. You want to hear Arena go crazy up 45? Hey. That'll be one of the walk ons. He's the one hitting a three pointer to make it 100 for the third straight game for the first time in program history. <laughs> Jackson Bart, last game, went 0 for 2 from three, and one of them got wedged in the side of the rim. So what did he do? Went back to the gym and put up 500 jump shots just to make one. Well, let's see when the Bearcats get it back as well, because the shot clock could be off, and we'll see if Mick Cronin tells him to hold it. You got to get a steal. And skip history. Well, opportunity for that running out as well. Brownlee. Most anticipated final 30 seconds in a blowout ever. <laughs> oh, look at that. Fair will put it up. It is no good. Brooks will get the rebound. And Mick Cronin, I think, is going to let him take a shot at it. They need a three for a hundred. Good work, Collins. All the Bearcats and BB and Tia have come to their feet. feet. Yeah, he waved and it off. He took too long. He waved it off. There will not be a shot at history as Kaz holds on to it. It goes to Justin Jennifer, and history will not be made. Mick Cronin told the walk-ons no thanks. We'll take a break and come back and hear from the Bearcats. Cincinnati, their third straight win to start the season. Victorious by a final tally of 97 to 54. Tom Glitter alongside Terry Nelson and now joined by Kyle Washington who had a nice start with the Bearcats tonight. You guys came out, locked in, hit your first 13 field goals. And did you feel from the opening tip that Everybody was focused on the task at hand tonight, Kyle. Yeah, we just wanted to execute. Uh, uh, the coaches were anticipating that we might take a little dip because we've been, you know, playing well and beating teams pretty handedly. But, you know, we just wanted to show that we were focused and we had a, a, a level of determination tonight. You know, we got to shore up some things in the second half, but we'll be all right. I know as a post player, the minute you catch the ball, mm -hmm. you like to read how a guy's playing mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. What did it feel like as soon as you caught the basketball that they didn't take away your left or your right? No, they really didn't. Uh, but it was it was all right because we were just reading the defense, and I have to do a little bit of a better job of being patient early. But, uh, you know, we just have to keep on reading the defense. And when they cut, make sure I hit like what I did for Trey earlier. But, uh, you know, we're just going to keep on playing well, keep on playing together as a team. Kyle, just talk about playing together as a team. And tonight we saw all the different rotations that Mick Cronin uh -huh. can put out there. Do you feel like now three games in, because you've rotated the lineup so much, everybody's starting to become comfortable with each other? Oh, definitely. Uh, we're just uh, – we keep on uh, reassuring the freshmen that keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on doing what you've been trained to do in practice, and you'll be fine. Because, you know, these se our group of seniors and older guys that have been here for a while, we just keep on putting wind in their sails. And we really want them to contribute because we wanna, really want to be a deep team. And, we really, you know, we want to keep on doing that. Your leadership style, along with Gary Clark as the seniors on the team, mm -hmm. how does that relate to these young guys and the guys that have been back around knowing that you got to get your touch, but at the same time, do what you do because it opens up for what we want to do. Exactly. Our leadership style is we, we don't want to, we don't, we don't approach it in a hazing type of style where you're a freshman and we're going to get on you for everything wrong you do. We're just saying play hard and uh, make sure you shore up mistakes with hard effort. That's what coach says, coach. So we keep on reassuring it to them. And, uh, you know, I, I got it from my dad. Shout out to him. It's his birthday today. Ah, happy birthday, dad. Wow. I love you. Happy birthday. All right. Yeah. Happy birthday to your father, to mm -hmm. Gary Clark. Mm -hmm. I hope there's and, and to Gary, to too. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, Sam Martin, our, our walk-on. Well, there you go. Yeah. So I hope there's some so cake thoughtful. back in the dressing I think, room. I think the athletic director's birthday is Mike Bones' birthday, birthday as well. Hey, Absolutely. All the, his birthday's all around. You got some of the quirkiest stuff. You understand every mascot <laughs> in Division I. <laughs> yeah. And every birthday. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And every right. birthday. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, Terry. All right, thanks.
Great job tonight by Kyle Washington. Terry and I will be back and wrap it up on the other side of the break. A dominant win by the Bearcats tonight. He defeats Coppin State 97 to 54. Tom Glitter, Terry Nelson with you to wrap it up as Cincinnati jumped out early, scoring their first 13 field goals and never looked back from there. Five players end up in double figures, and let's take a look at those five. Jaron Cumberland leads the way with 19 points. The birthday boy Gary Clark with 12. Justin Jennifer 16. Kyle Washington and Jacob Evans with 11 each. That's the four of the five starters, Terry, for Mick Cronin tonight. Who says Golden State Warriors are the only one that can share the ball? This team has 23 assists and 32 made field goals. I mean, you look at it, they shot a sizzling 51% from the floor, 51 rebounds, plus 24 on the glass, 18 second chance points, and the assist and the points in the paint. So Kyle was the one that started all that, and he was good to finish it the same way. Well, they certainly did a lot of things right, as they have in the first three games of the year here at BB&T Arena. Now onto the road to the Cayman Islands, and they'll see what they can do in that tournament. Terry, been a pleasure as always, my friend. Always, my brother. From BB&T Arena, Cincinnati scores 97 and defeats Coppin State, who has just 54. For Terry Nelson, I'm Tom Glenner. You've been watching Bearcats basketball on Fox Sports Ohio. Enjoy your night.